So when we come back to look at a corn stand, we want to make sure we're getting out of the pickup and getting out in the field and taking a good look at the individual plants. In our last agronomy focus video, we talked about making a stand assessment and understanding our population. Today in this agronomy focus video, I want to talk about just taking a look at those individual plants. With Central Valley Ag, I'm Tim Mundorf and you're watching our agronomy focus video. The first thing I want to do when I get out here and start looking at plants is make an assessment of what growth stage I'm at. Growth stage is pretty important as we start to make herbicide recommendations, as we start to understand variation that we're seeing within the field. And the way I do that is just by counting the number of leaves that have fully matured on the plant. And what I'm looking for is this fully collared leaf. Does it have a collar at the bottom of the leaf where it meets the stock of the plant? So here I've got that rounded leaf, which is that first individual leaf that comes out on corn. I've got another leaf here that's a full-size leaf, another full-size leaf here. And here I've got a fourth leaf that is fully collared. I've got an open collar at the bottom. It's not still tied together or part of the whorl. As I move up the plant, the rest of these leaves are still emerging. They're not fully emerged yet. So this makes it a V4 corn plant. This is my fourth leaf up. It's the last leaf coming from the bottom that's fully matured. The other thing I wanna do is maybe look at some of the plants around me. Are my other plants also at V4? Well, this one's already the true leaf's down here, the rounded leaf's down here. There's one, two, three. My fourth leaf isn't quite collared yet, so there is a little bit of variation. I've got some plants about a half leaf behind. Now I'm gonna wanna spread out from here, look around the field, and just kinda get an assessment of how many plants do I have that are more than a half leaf behind. If I'm a full leaf behind, a lot of times I'll get a reduced ear from that. If I'm two leaves behind, I'll almost always end up with a barren plant. I won't get a harvestable ear at all. So again, as we get to the end of the year and we're harvesting, we wanna make sure that we've assessed our crop throughout the year to, to kind of come up with some clues as to why harvest might go really well or why we might have some issues. And then what can we do to try to fix it next year? Some things to think about. Was the plant planted at an even depth? If I set my planter for a two inch depth, did I get a, a solid two inch depth across? And as I find those smaller plants, I can dig them up, assess the depth of planting versus the average plants in that field and, and make some decisions about maybe I need to go back and look at my planter and how I'm set up and, and try to make sure I've got consistent depth out there. So let's start by digging up one of these plants. So one thing we want to make sure is we bring a good shovel with us so we can dig plants up as we get later and later in the season as, as soil dries out it gets tougher and tougher to dig. I like to use a full size shovel. Early in the season you can use a small garden shovel or hand trowel. Want to dig about oh, three inches or so away from that plant, get myself in there good and deep so I can pop the plant out and nice and slowly break apart the soil around the plant to understand what I've got going on like to take a little look at my soil structure. Is my structure good and crumbly? And that's a nice granular soil structure I've got there. What's my soil moisture? You can see I've got a couple inches of dry soil, but we've got good moisture down there where my roots are starting to grow in. Roots are growing out well. So one thing I'm looking at a lot as I break this plant up and look for the roots, do I have a hatchet root system? And a hatchet root system means really parallel to the travel of the planter, it seems like the roots are all growing there and they're not moving out. And that happens when I smear the sidewalls if I plant too wet. So again, it's not trying to place blame, it's just trying to look and see how that corn plant is growing in the soil I planted it in. So I evenly and lightly try to break this soil apart so I can see a good look at the, the root system I've got. Bring in a pocket knife, especially as you get a little later in the season and can kind of stab that soil a little bit to break it up. Coming up from the bottom will help a little bit. I want to make some uh, observations about where the seed is at. Can I check my depth a little bit? But overall, you know, I've got a little bit of compaction here. There might have been, it might have been just a little wet when we planted, but actually it's coming apart pretty well. Good soil moisture. It actually looks like my root system coming down from this plant is developing fairly well. So the plant develops perpendicular to the row for the most part. As we look here, our plants, you know, even if they emerge facing parallel to the row, they sense the plants around them and they'll straighten out. So this is how my plant is setting in the soil and in the row compared to the plants around it. And I've actually got pretty good root structure there. 
Uh, these first set of nodal roots are starting to develop pretty well and they're coming out at a nice so 35 to 40 degree angle. Moving away from the plant fairly evenly in all, all directions. If you've got a problem with sidewall compaction and smearing, you'll see those roots all kind of compressed together and they'll form kind of a hatchet that goes parallel or in line with the way you planted the field. But here we've got a pretty good root system. Some other things I'm looking for as I'm making this dig. Look for insects in this soil that you're breaking up. You know, early in the season like this, we're gonna look a little bit for wireworm. We might look a little bit for grubs. Now, normally we're gonna see some root feeding if that's the case, and in this case, I'm not seeing any root feeding. Look a little bit for cutworm might be early in the season like this. And again, just trying to make a good assessment, the health of my plants, their color, which looks pretty good. That can kind of uh, tie a little bit to soil fertility, also makes a difference in the hybrid that you're using. But that's kind of what we're looking for. We want to get out there and dig up several plants as we go through that field. Dig up a, a smaller one, a, a more normal size one, see what your differences are. You can measure from the seed up to the crown and basically what I'll do a lot of times is put that crown at the three quarter inch line. And if you add three quarter inches from the crown up to where ground level is gonna be, and then measure down to where that seed is at, you've got your total planting depth. And when I look at that here, I have got about an inch and three quarters total, inch and a half to inch and three quarters total depth. So a good reasonable planting depth, just check that against what you had your planter set at and make sure what you've got is what you were planning for. So hopefully these are some tools that you can use as you assess your stand and take a look at what you've got out there. Again, we don't wanna be surprised at harvest and wonder, well, why didn't I get the yield I was expecting or why was my yield really good compared to what it's been in past years? Make assessments every year of your, both your stand and population, the health of your plant, what's going on with your plants. You have nice even picket fence stands, same height, even spacing and make notes. And then you can use those notes and, and uh, thoughts about how you can make improvements for next year. Hope you've enjoyed this agronomy focused video with Central Valley Ag, I'm Tim Mundorf.